Hello, Driving Intelligence Community. Now that the weather's getting cold, and you probably aren't boating as much, and maybe even thinking about putting your boat up for the winter, um, it's time to consider about some maintenance activities that are probably extremely important for your boat. I want to talk today about those boats that have rubber water pump impellers. You'll see here I have in hand a water pump impeller. Um, this one is about five years old. I, uh, at the beginning of this season, had replaced this because um, I did have a problem some time ago, actually five years ago, almost to the, to the month, with a water pump impeller that completely imploded on itself. You can see here that all the fins had come off. I actually waited too long, um, and I decided that I was going to start replacing these water pump impellers every five years. So I've scheduled that uh, 2015 was the last time, 2020 this time, uh, 2025 would be my next. But this time I actually pulled the water pump impeller and saw that it was starting to come apart again. Now it's critical that you don't run these water pumps or these engines dry when you have a rubber water pump impeller because they get hot very fast. They need the water for lubrication. Uh, but you'll see and I'll show in some video that the heat, even though I ran this in water all the time, started to degrade this impeller. And in fact, even with water in it constantly, the heat was so significant that the housing that the water pump impeller goes in uh, started to melt. The heat was actually melting the inside. So I ended up having to replace the entire water pump assembly, other than the pulley. The pulley and the bearing assembly were still good, uh, but the back half of that had to be replaced. So it's important you take a look at this um, to add to the problem with getting to this, this level of failure. I replaced it, ended up uh, a chunk of this, I've tried to flush it out completely, I ended up a chunk of this got caught in the hose coming from the water inlet at the bottom of the boat. I did a high speed run one day and that chunk, which was about that size, ended up getting caught at the intake of the water pump and restricted water flow and the engine overheated again. So I did another thorough flush, um, but um, do not take these for granted. These probably need to be replaced more often than five years. And if you sometimes run this engine without water uh, circulating through the engine, you probably should check it as soon as possible. And being in winter, fall, winter, it's the time to check this. Just another quick tip for you. Uh, the rest of this video will show you on this specific boat with a, uh, a Mercruiser inboard, full inboard engine, what I did to replace this. Thanks for watching. Here you'll see in the photo that my dad is giving me a dirty look because he's helping me with the water pump impeller instead of going out in the boat. The next series of photos shows the damage that occurred as a result of uh, running this impeller for too long. The, the blades on the impeller completely disintegrated off the impeller. You'll see that it caused damage within the housing. Um, there was nothing left. There was no water flow whatsoever. So the engine thank thankfully had protection with the computer that alarmed indicating over temps and shut the engine down. Not everybody has that. I have another boat, 1968, that has a water pump impeller that's rubber and doesn't have that indication. So you could blow a head gasket or permanently damage the engine if you're not paying close attention to your temperature gauge, which means you need to have a, a properly operating temperature gauge. Because of this situation that occurred in 2015, uh, I decided I was gonna replace the water pump impellers every five years. You'll see that the water pump impeller was removed um, this, this year as part of my five-year plan, and you'll see degradation of that impeller that occurred because of heat buildup. I never ran this engine without water running through the coolant system. I always had a hose hooked up to it or I had it in the water. So you'll see over time that heat continues to build up, still builds up, and will cause damage to that water pump impeller. Remover, removal of my pump is rather easy. This is in a, uh, a Sanger boat, 1999, with a Mercruiser inboard engine. Um, the, the, uh, the water pump is located in the bottom left of the engine. All you have to do is loosen the belt as indicated. A couple bolts hold it in. There are two hoses in the back with hose clamps that need to be removed. And at that point, you can, um, you can check the the pump part number to make sure that you're going to buy the proper pump, uh, pump housing, pump elements. I disassembled it. You'll see here on the bench all the parts that are required for reassembly. Um, now the new impeller is installed. I'm starting to put the uh, the entire housing back together. 
Um, some of the things that I also do, I also make sure that uh, I clean all the bolts, make sure all corrosion is removed, I remove all rust, and I repaint. So I want to make sure that corrosion is controlled. And you'll see here the final assembly that's ready for reinstallation in the boat. Reinstallation, of course, is the reverse. And um, the first thing I do is put the, uh, the suction cup mount water uh, intake at the bottom of the boat turn the water on a good flow to make sure that water is pumping up into the uh, into the water coolant system and then I start the engine and let it run to make sure that I'm getting good coolant flow throughout the uh, throughout the cooling system and that water finally inevitably comes out the exhaust at this point you want to keep an eye on your temperatures watch your belts make sure that uh, everything is operating properly smoothly uh, you'll want to gas up the engine a few times to make sure everything stays together and you're finally ready to uh, ready to go boating.